This is Indiana in the Morning, presented by First Commonwealth Bank here on WCCS AM 1160 and 101.1 FM. Our interviews are presented by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. And with the coronavirus situation in the country's attention span, one of the things that may get overlooked is the cold and the flu seasons that are coming up and we're in right now. In fact, so far in Pennsylvania, it doesn't seem like the influenza virus has made much of a dent. Could that be due to some changing habits as far as keeping ourselves safe from other colds and viruses? Joining us now is Dave Johnson, healthcare expert and the author of some best selling books about medicine. So, Dave, thank you very much for joining us here on Indiana in the Morning. Thank you, Josh. Delighted to be with you. So, let's talk about the big thing the fact that. So far, at least in Pennsylvania, the the influenza uh, has not had a very major effect so far this season. In fact, it's not even merited a mention on the Pennsylvania Department of Health's influenza webpage of the fact of, of how many cases of flu have come in. So what do you attribute the fact that maybe influenza is not going to be hitting hard this season? Is it because of the fact that we've kind of stepped up our game, our sanitation game a little bit? Well, it's really remarkable, Josh, uh, because public health experts coming into the flu season were worried about what they were calling a twindemic, you know, a, a bad uh, influenza season on top of the, you know, the um, COVID that's rampaging through the country. And and you're right, um, the numbers are, are really low. Uh, Oklahoma is the only state um, with moderate levels of influenza-like illnesses, uh, all of their states, including Pennsylvania, have minimal levels. That's why nobody's talking about it. Uh, last year, there were 195 uh, pediatric deaths from influenza. Um, now that was over the course of the whole flu season. Uh, this year, uh, there's only been one, um, and we're sitting around one and a half percent of patient visits for influenza-like symptoms, and it's been at that level uh, for the last four weeks. That's a nationwide level. Uh, last year, it was between 5 and 6% and rising, so really a lot less. So the big question is why, and I, I think you're right. It's, um, it's a beneficial byproduct of changing behaviors related to COVID, um, so better sanitation, uh, hygiene, uh, more social distancing, and believe it or not, um, more people are getting flu shots. Uh, we've sent out something like two million or 200 million doses of flu shots. Last year it was 165 million. So it's really a combination of all those things, um, better, uh, better attention, better prevention, um, and thank goodness for it because if we, uh, if we had a bad influenza epidemic, uh, think of how much more pressure we'd be putting on the already strained ICUs and hospital bed capacity uh, throughout the country. Definitely. But this is kind of a situation where I think it's also almost as volatile as the COVID-19 situation is where things can change at the drop of a hat. Could uh, the situation regarding influenza change that quickly as well? Oh, sure. Uh, highly in infectious spread. Um, we're, you know, a, a third of the way through the, the cold and flu season. All indications are good right now, but just like with COVID, it could change quickly. Uh, and we're coming back from a holiday where, where people got together, not in the numbers they have in the past, but uh, certainly more than they have in recent weeks, uh, except for Thanksgiving. And um, I'm, I'm hopeful that we won't see a spike in influenza or COVID for that matter, but, uh, but we might. Do you think that the changes that we have seen, as you mentioned, in uh, in personal hygiene, sanitization, and the social distancing, is that going to be around for good? Uh, I think so. Um, you know, define good, but it, I'm I'm encouraged by some of the changing poll numbers. Um, you know, I'm sure you remember, Josh. Uh, you know, a couple of months ago. Fewer than 50% of people were willing to uh, take a COVID vaccine when it became available. Um, I saw a poll last week that indicated that percentage is now up to 70%. Uh, mm -hmm. People are wearing masks uh, at a much higher rate than they were before, too. Um, I think there's 
a much greater appreciation in the body politic for the threat posed by pandemic disease. And, um, you know, I, I think we'll be far readier for it next time. Uh, I hope we are because I, I personally don't want to go through this again. Right? I, I think so, a lot of I think that can that can be the same could be said for a lot of us. We're talking with Dave Johnson, healthcare expert, the author of some best selling books. We'll get to those books in just a little bit. But uh, Dave, what I wanted to ask as well is, um, what else other than the increased um, sanitization and hygiene efforts? What else can this health crisis teach us about influenza? Well, I, I, I think it's really uh, the, the other thing is is the importance of getting the um, the, the flu shots, the, uh, the the influenza vaccines, and um, you know they're not perfect, but they work, and uh, the type of influenza that's spreading this year is, is, is A, the bird flu type, and that mm-hmm. is built into this year's vaccine and seems to be pretty effective in, in resisting it. So, um, you know, if, if, if you can build up the antibodies, then even if you're not quite as careful with social distancing and personal hygiene, you won't get the, you won't get the disease. And uh, influenza is not quite as nasty as COVID in that you don't spread it uh, without knowing it. Right. You know, usually people get sick and spread it. So I think there's, there's a greater appreciation for the power of vaccines. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're seeing that in the numbers. More people are um, getting vaccines for influenza and more people want the vaccines for COVID. So I, I think that's a big, that's a big movement. You mentioned the fact that this year's influenza is, has some of the, bird flu that was involved uh, just a several just a couple of years ago it's been a while since we've heard that name but now that we have an idea of what bird flu is all about we know how to prepare for it do these flu viruses like avian flu or another type of flu or something like that, are they kind of cyclical like they come on strong and then they kind of go away for a bit and then they come back into consciousness well they're they're viruses uh, so they're they're always there mm-hmm. and they're always mutating uh, and some of the mutations um, become powerful and, and uh, have the danger of, of uh, becoming pandemic-like in, in their spread. Um, so we have to always kind of stay one step ahead of it, right? And th- uh, one of the great stories uh, about COVID is uh, the extent to which the scientific community has stepped up and using entirely new types of technology as developed remarkably effective vaccines in under a year. You know, it typically took eight to 10 years to get a vaccine to market. The fastest was four years, and that was for mumps, which was a relatively easy disease to uh, protect against. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think this effort, um, uh, you know, over 400 uh, vaccines under development, 75 in trials, two, uh, the Moderna and the Pfizer out into the marketplace now is a scientific accomplishment, a focused scientific accomplishment on a par with going to the moon or uh, the Manhattan Project. I mean, it's it's really remarkable. And it, we'll see enormous dividends um, going forward in our ability to treat not only uh, viruses, but uh, certain types of cancers using some of these new technologies. So it's it's a it's a big moment. All right. Dave, we know that you've had some best-selling books. Um, what is the most recent book that you've published, sir? Uh, the Customer Revolution in Healthcare, uh, Delivering Kinder, Smarter, Affordable Care for All. <laughs> all right. And that's available at all the book at all the major outlets? Yes, it is. Uh, published by McGraw-Hill, and it, it's done pretty well. Um, I, I, my belief is that when the dust settles, we'll uh, fix the very broken American health system more through uh, bottom-up, evolutionary, um, private company-led uh, innovation than we re- will through top-down um, governmental um, um, reform, mm-hmm. although the government's got to do its its part to create a level playing field um, and keep people safe. But uh, I'm very excited, just like we talked about with the vaccine that when we unleash the American innovation engine on healthcare uh, and really give it access to solve the, the problems, uh, the day-to-day problems that people have with, with healthcare that um, 
uh, we can uh, we can become the envy of the world. Excellent. All right. Well, Dave, thank you very much for joining us this morning here on Indiana in the Morning. All the best to you and have a wonderful New Year, sir. Yeah, Josh, you too. Enjoyed the conversation. Enjoyed the conversation.